<clears throat> there are two types of people in the world. People who like heavy metal and dicks. Don't worry if you too much if you fall into the latter category. I'm very persuasive. Those are the words that Andrew O'Neill put on his first page of a history of heavy metal. And that's what I'm here to review today. Uh, last night, I finally finished it, after about a week of reading it, and it is very, very good. Very much recommended. Just want to put that out there. Um, so, it's, an, it's kind of an adaptation of his comedy, recent, rather, comedy tour, um, Andrew O'Neill's A History of Heavy Metal, from which I have the shit because I saw it and it was great. And originally I kind of wanted a DVD or audio recording of the tour because that show is so good. Um, I don't think there are any more dates scheduled for it, but if you get the chance to see it, do. And Andrew, if you're watching this, please put a recording out somewhere because it was great. Um, but anyway, we so we've ended up with this book. Presumably, um, the outcome of all the research that Andrew is probably doing for the comedy tour. Um, it's slightly less comedic, but the comedy is definitely still in there. He punctuates the book with a lot of little footnotes at the bottom of the page, where he adds in little tidbits, little jokes about whatever he's talking about, little anecdotes from his life or from things in general, um, and a couple of jokes directly taken from the show, but we can forgive him that because they are funny. And if you've seen the show, it's a nice little callback. If you've not, it's just a good bit of comedy added into the book. Um, the book itself covers, as the title says, the history of heavy metal. It's probably the book to have on the history of metal, at least if you're not looking for something academic level of... Not necessarily accuracy, but if you're not looking for something at an academic level of history, but if you're looking for a good read that does genuinely cover the history of heavy metal, it's very good. I, I just loved it. I really, really loved it. I'm already looking forward to reading it again. Um, it starts at the start. It starts at cavemen banging on things in caves, so it definitely takes it from the start, and works the way through right away into predicting the future of heavy metal, which was pretty fun. Uh, Guns N' Roses still haven't released that new album, <laughs> but um, yes, it was a very good read. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I've seen Andrew in a couple of different uh, shows, a couple of different bands or guys, whatever, his own comedy shows at a few different things. Um, I've seen him with uh, the men that will not be blamed for nothing a handful of times and most of the times that I've seen him live I've been, had the chance to go and say hi and chat to him afterwards and the recent couple of times he's mentioned this book either on stage and I've asked him a bit about it about how it's going and just seeing him talk about it and you know asking him about it and how it's going you could tell just from the way that his face lit up that he was really excited about the book he he obviously, if you've ever seen Andrew O'Neill, he has a genuine interest in metal, and which basically goes without saying, you only need to see a picture of him to know that. Um, but he seems to have genuinely had a good time re uh, preparing this book and the comedy show, uh, and a lot of work has gone into it. It's quite clear that a lot of work has gone into it, and it's a really, really nice little compendium of the history of heavy metal. It's not without its holes, it's not without its flaws, but it really, what it covers, it covers well. And there's a little bit of author bias that goes in there, but it's mostly comedy. Glossing over emo, ooh, whoops. Glossing over emo in all of about five lines. I thought it was quite funny. To a genuine fan of it, it might seem a little bit offensive. And the pot shots at glam rock, come on. Um, but it was a very good read. I really, really loved it. It covered it very, very well. And I definitely recommend it, not only to heavy metal fans, which, as you can tell, I probably am, um, but even to people who just have a kind of a passing interest in heavy metal or are interested in just kind of the history of music and the development of different genres and styles. People who get confused about genres in metal and rock um, probably could also benefit from reading the book. It really covers and really explains a lot about how genres develop from the sort of proto-genres and how kind of blues became rock, became metal, became the myriad of different forms of metal we have today. Um, and it really, it doesn't go into so much depth that you get lost in it. It's not a hard book to read. It's actually a very easy book to read. I, I quite often find if I'm reading something quite difficult, something very kind of intellectually involved, um, that after a couple of pages, a chapter or two, um, I often need to stop and do something else just because I'm losing my focus. But this, I, I sat and read for hours and I really, really was just enthralled by it. Um, it's not like a novel, it's not going to grip you and you're not going to immediately need to turn the next page, 
But I was, became genuinely interested in the things I was talking about and a lot of things I knew just from listening to music and reading a lot of magazines and that sort of things. But I learned a couple of things, um, a couple of things I didn't know about, certainly a lot of bands that have been added to my to listen to list. Um, lots of new things I'm going to need to look into and listen to myself. Um, and I just really, really enjoyed it. So I wanted to make a little video saying that it's good and you should go and get it. I just looked it up on Amazon, it's currently £10.50, which isn't bad for it being two weeks released. Uh, go and get it. Just go and get it, seriously. I think it's even cheaper if you get the Kindle version. Um, but it's just such a good book. It's really, really a good read. You don't have to be a fan of heavy metal, like I say. There's comedy in, in there, it is a fun book to read. But knowing a bit more about the bands and the, the kind of jokes that run in kind of musical circles and um sort of being able to picture the music or the image or things that are being referenced in the book um just brought it all a bit more to life and just gave you a bit more of a feeling about what was being talked about and where i say it's not without its holes there is one thing i wanted to point out before we finish page 128 <clears throat> just to get really specific uh where were we talking about uh, metallica sang of hotel rooms and motorways and state they'll never stop and they'll never quit because we're Metallica, which is a quote from Hit the Lights. Had a metal band mentioned themselves in their lyrics before? Question mark. Sabbath certainly never did that. Tell you did do that about six years prior, Iron Maiden, in the song Iron Maiden, from the album Iron Maiden. Just something that sprung out to me when I read that, so I thought I'd make a little mention of it, but it's all jokes. It's all fine. Really, really love it. Really excited to read it again. If you haven't read it, go and read it. If you are reading it, let me know what you think. Um, is there anything you think I should or shouldn't have said already? Um, but I, I definitely recommend going and reading it. And I don't know what more there is to say. Go and read it, please. It's so good. Catch you next time.